Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where high scores count for absolutely nothing and obscurity counts for everything. Let's meet today's players. So, welcome back, Sam and Kim. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the final, and this is your last and final chance. Remind us how you did. Well, we unfortunately went out in the first round um, to build his confidence a bit. It did have a hard question with some Bond villains. Bond villains. They yeah. did for you. They as They did. nearly did for Bond in yeah. every single film, and then suddenly did it at the last moment. <laughs> Bad luck. What are you hoping for this afternoon? I would love anything to do with animals. Anything to do with animals. Sam? Yes. Um, some random anatomy and physiology. Because... Random anatomy and physiology? That's the first category, I can't believe it. <laughs> Very best of luck to you. I think you're going to go a long way this afternoon. Welcome back, Jono and Vicky. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did. Hi, Alexander. Yeah, we went out in the head-to-head -head round, unfortunately, on a politics question, which politics. is normally a strong subject for us. Normally, this time? Yeah, very uh -uh. no good. So it... we're hoping to do a bit better this time. Well, very, very best of luck to you this afternoon. A welcome to David and Sarah. How do you two know each other? Well, I've known David for over 40 years, Alexander. We've been married for 38 of those years. Well done. Congratulations to you. And where have you come from? Uh, Newcastle upon Tyne. My <laughs> part of the world. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Um, what are you hoping to...? to, to... Um, questions about literature for me, uh, food, general knowledge and... History, geography, maybe some sport. Maybe. You've got it all covered. You've got everything. Everything. That's the whole spectrum of, of, of human knowledge Oops, right there. <laughs> very good. Well, very best of luck to you this Thank afternoon. You. And finally, Barry and Carl. How do you two know each other? Well, uh, I met Carl ten years ago when he met and married a friend of mine who was in the same theatre group as me. Good. Look, what, in the same night? <laughs> that was quick going. <laughs> met and married? Yeah. yeah here, like Gordon me. Bold. <laughs> Good Lord, what were, what, what were you doing in the theatre that night? Um, well, uh, I remember the theatre group, we, uh, we mainly do pantomimes, and um, some usually plays the Dane, yes, I do. And I... Carl actually joined that year, and he was a back end of the cow. <laughs> he genuinely was? He genuinely do you, was. Uh, do you keep the, the, the nice little Lenin beard for the, for the Dane? No, that goes. That goes. Yes, it does. And actually, his wife, who we met, was the front end of the cow. It's true. No, they, they met over, over the udders. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely true, <laughs> they yes. They did. How's that? Ah, oh, it's lovely. Very best of luck this afternoon. Um, I'm sure you'll be spectacular. We'll find out more about you all throughout the show. And finally, let me introduce the man who, it says here, is the oil within the wheels of obscurity. He's my pointless friend. He's Richard. <laughs> Do you mind me? Do you mind me just reading out random introductions like that about you? I do, yeah. <laughs> I do. I take, uh, I take grave offence. <laughs> Sorry. Well, listen. No, I, I, I in, the wheel, in those wheels of obscurity, you are the WD-40. Other oils are available. <laughs> <laughs> Great little show lined up today. We've got two very, very good returning pairs uh, here, I think, because I think it's going to be a battle royal. David, a little bit sport in round one, so you'll be very happy. And uh, the back end of a pantomime cow. That's uh, <laughs> battle be joined. And uh, if any of you guys get through to the head to head, we've got uh, we've got nocturnal bird life and international politics. What more do you want? <laughs> anyway, now we've asked all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless. So we are after the obscure answers that those 100 people didn't get. The fewer people who got the answer, the fewer points awarded, and the better the chance of winning. To stay in the game with the chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they possibly can. But what everyone's looking to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Nobody won the jackpot last time. In fact, nobody's won the jackpot this series, can you believe? So we add another £1,000. Pounds. So today's jackpot starts off at, would you believe it, £6,000. That's turning into a huge sum of money. Right, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. And you have to be very careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, guys, the first category this afternoon is... Football. Football. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the first question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many English Football League winners as they could. Richard. 
Yeah, we're looking for any winner of the uh, the top flight of English football since the inaugural season in 1888, right through to the Premier League of 2010. Uh, 23 teams have been English Football League winners in that time. Oh, Kim, you're not looking thrilled with this, are you? Uh, Sam and Kim, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. It would have been all right if you'd have said uh, something that wasn't football um, and other sport related, but I'm going to try and have to try and play it safe. OK, Sam's um, just looking a little <laughs> bit anxious. A little I'm going to go safe, and I'm hoping it's as safe as it can be, and say... Liverpool. You're going to say Liverpool? OK. I think it's a good answer. We're pretty sure it's a good answer. We're sure <laughs> that's hoping. right. You just hope that's not going to score too highly. Yes. OK. Well, let's hope it doesn't. Let's see how many people said Liverpool. Well, it's right. 64. 64 people said Liverpool. That scores you 64. It's not a terrible score. Richard? Yeah, always better to be safe than sorry. They've won it uh, 18 times up to, up to 2010. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Vicky, how's your football knowledge? OK, I'm, I'm not too confident on this, but I'm okay. going to go for our team, which is Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur. Where do you think that's going to be, though? I'm asking you to predict your fate. OK, I'm going to go for a prediction of about 36. 36. Well, let's see. You're hoping to score as few points as possible. Let's see how many people said Spurs. How many people said Tottenham Hotspur? Lower than Liverpool. Oh. Better than even in your wildest dreams, Vicky. You were hoping for 36. You got 35. How's that? Richard, Spurs. Yeah, Liverpool 64, Spurs 35. What a game. What a game. <laughs> Both managers are really going to have to look at those defences. Yeah, they won it twice, Spurs, up to, up to 2010. OK, we are looking for English Football League winners. David. You said sport was one of the areas you were hoping yes, for. Yes, that's right. Here it is. S happy? Have we, have we served it up as yes, you liked? Yes, very happy with that. Very good. And, uh, um, I was going to go for Nottingham Forest. You're going to go for Nottingham Forest. A nice obscure answer. You're hoping obscure enough to score lower sure. even than 35 that Vicky rather brilliantly managed to score. Let's see how many people said Nottingham Forest. Down it goes. 13. 13 people said Nottingham Forest. That scores you 13. Richard? Yeah, very good answer. They won it once in, in 1978 under Brian Clough and went on to win the European Cup as well. Well done, David. Carl, there's a trend going on here. 64, 35, 13. Pointless. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I was going to go for Nottingham Forest. Um, oh. Barry's <laughs> not a keen football fan. Right. So, I'm going to be dangerous and I'm going to go with, I expect an ooh after this answer, Blackpool. Ooh. ooh. <laughs> You're hoping to score as few points as possible with Blackpool. You're hoping that Blackpool is a correct answer. Oh, I think this could be a very good score. Let's see how many people said Blackpool. Oh, oh no! What oh. do I know? I know nothing. Unfortunately, Blackpool is an incorrect answer. That means you score 100 points. Richard, Blackpool. I think that's really, really tough luck. They're a very successful team, won the FA Cup, of course, but have never won the top division of English football. Bad luck. Bad luck, Carl. That was a, that was a brave, brave, brave punt. And that's what you have to do on this show. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Rather a wide-ranging field, I'll say, from Barry and Carl out in front on 100. <laughs> but, Barry, you can't be it's cross okay. with him. I can. He took a no, risk. I can. He took no, a no. risk for you. All he said is, I hope it's football, I hope it's football, and look. Genuinely think Blackpool was a very, very, very good wrong answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. It was an educated... Yeah. Well, it wasn't even a guess. It was, it was a very calculated wrong decision. Answer. Wrong you. answer. David and Sarah, oh, looking wonderful there. Jono and Vicky, Sam and Kim, well, obviously you're in the middle there. You've got to make sure you can find a really good answer. Kim, you see, not bad, not a bad answer, as it turns out. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? Well, Barry, your reputation precedes you. <laughs> <laughs> Carl said you knew nothing about football. That's right. He's, uh, he's left you with a mountain to climb. He hasn't. I think I know it. 
OK. I think I've got an answer. OK, we are looking for English Football League winners. You don't know anything about sport, or is it just football you don't think about? Uh, well, sport, I suppose. I can do ping-pong. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. I'd be so impressed if you really can. <laughs> can you really? No, no I, no, I can't, I can't, OK. OK, all right, all right, come on. What, what I think, and I, I remember from years ago, I remember it happening, and then they fell out the Premiership, I think, and I'm going to go for Blackburn. You're going to go for Blackburn? I think, yes. OK, we've had Blackpool, you're going for Blackburn. Yes. Let's see if it's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Blackburn. There's no red line, obviously, because you are the high scorers. It's correct. Go on, on, go on, go on, go on, come on, come on go on, down, go on, down it goes. Down the bottom. Twenty-three. <laughs> Not a bad score. That scores you twenty-three, taking your total up to one hundred and twenty-three. Blackburn, Richard. Yeah, Blackburn. Very good answer. They've won the league title three times, which, consulting my notes, is three times more than Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> See? It's by no means over this round. I know you're way out in front, but anything could happen. Sarah. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, you can't lose. You can't lose. Even if you score the maximum of 100 points, you'll never overtake Barry and Carl over there. Remember, we are looking for English Football League winners. Not my strongest subject at all, I'm afraid. Subject. Does fact, David ever tell you about matches he's watched? Do you think or? I listen? <laughs> 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 I know nothing about football. Absolutely zilch. Um, I've got to take an educated guess. You have and to. And hopefully educated Newcastle United. I was just going to say, there's one close to home, got surely. To be. Surely. Please. Surely. I seem to remember. I seem to remember. Let's see if it's a correct answer. Newcastle United. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Oh, God. Look at that, 22. Wow. The Toon score you 22 points, wow. taking your total up to 35. They won it four times, though not for a spectacularly long time. So, Richard, when did Newcastle last win? 1927. <laughs> yeah. Really? It's only 80 odd years ago. Come on, give them a break. It's not like they've had millions of pounds spent on them since. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jono. Jono, you are currently at 35. To avoid overtaking Barry and Carl on 123, you have to score 87 or less. I think you can do that. I think even I can do that. I think you can do um, that. I've got a couple of teams in mind, um, and I'm going to go for, I think, they, if not the first league winners, one of the first, and it's who Tottenham based their football kit on, which is a bit of trivia for you. I'm going to go for Preston North End. Preston North End. Oh, that's the answer for somebody who really knows their football trivia. There is the red line. Come below that line. You're through to the next round. Preston North End, let's see if it's correct, and if it is, how many people said it? It's right! I think this could be going a long way down. Oh, wow. Very good. Very good. 12 people said Preston North End. That scores you 12, gives you a total of 47. Richard? Yeah, very good. They won it, uh, they won it twice, Preston North End, uh, including the very first season, 1888, 1889. Sam. Finally, we come back to you. Finally. You are on 64. You have to score 58 or less with this answer to stay in the game. OK, we are looking for English Football League winners. I'm going to go for Leeds United. Leeds United. Barry and Carl really hoping that's an incorrect answer. Carl worried it's not. Barry blissfully unaware. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there's your red line. You come below that red line, you are through to the next round. Let's see if Leeds United is correct. Let's see how many people said it. It's right. There you are, through the red line. Great answer. That scores you 18. Takes your total up to 82. Richard. Yeah, congratulations. They won three league titles, the most recent uh, in the 90s. Well, the losing pair at the end of that round, I'm afraid, is Barry and Carl. Richard, what should they have said? Well, there was actually uh, one pointless uh, answer there, so very well done if you got this. Let's take a look. Sheffield United. Now, there's a huge amount of people in Sheffield now going, you know, we've seen Sheffield United nil enough times recently. <laughs> but uh, just one more time. H Huddersfield Town would have got you one. West Brom would have got you three. 
took a look at the worst answers. These are the answers that uh, most of our 100 people gave. Third place, Chelsea, 63. In second place, a familiar Liverpool was 64. And uh, what do you think's top? Manchester United. Everybody. Manchester United with 78 points. Thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score. I'm sorry, it's Barry and Carl. Bad luck. You see, in the end, Barry did really well, Carl. I, I did, and I you... did. <laughs> he surprised me. <laughs> I, I did do it all the way... Oh, I know football. I know football. I'm going out on football. Barry, what would you have loved to have had come up? Well, I'm quite good at books. No, I'm not really, no, am I? I'm not, just random, yeah. aren't I? But if you had anything about 70s American soap operas, I'd have been there. 70s oh. American soap operas. That's round two. <laughs> that's round two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. it's such a shame to say goodbye to you so early on. But uh, as you know, on Pointless, everyone gets two chances of uh, yeah. getting through to our final. So hopefully you'll be on for a little bit longer next time. But thank you so much for playing. Great contestants, thank you. Great. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Now, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one team is going to be leaving us at the end of this round. The category for round two is... Food and drink. Food and drink. Sarah, quite pleased with that one. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And the question is... Foods that begin with P. Foods that begin with P. Now, this is a brand new round on Pointless. We're about to show you some foods beginning with P. You'd be surprised to hear. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to tell us what type of foods they are. Richard. Yeah, we're simply going to show you six foods, and you just have to tell us what type of food they are. So if we said frankfurter, that would be a sausage. Some of them are simple, but uh, a lot of people know those ones, of course, so they will score you a lot of points. You want to maybe go for some of the obscure ones, which less people know. But if you give us an incorrect answer, you'll score 100 points. We're looking for foods, not drinks, as well. OK, the first six are... Pecan, Petit Pois, Patna, Parsley, Pumpernickel and Pecorino. Pecan, Petit Pois, Patna, Parsley, Pumpernickel, Pecorino. OK. Kim, there you go. Those are your foods. What we are looking for is what type of foods they are. I'm actually going to have to go quite safe, because there's three I just have no idea. We could be a guess. And I'm going to try and go with... Out of those three that I know, I'll go with pecan being a nut. Pecan being a nut. OK, let's see if it is a nut. And if it is a nut, let's see how many people knew that answer. Pecan. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, I think I've ever heard our poor delete guitarist have so little chance to get a wind up there. <laughs> but uh, there you are, you stopped him in, in, in mid-strum. In mid 98 people. Well, it's, it's better than 100, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'm not that good at maths, but I, I think. Uh, Richard, pecan. Yeah, it's uh, 98 points. I think that's because it's the official state nut of Texas, and, uh, you know, which carries a lot of cachet. Really? I was going to say cachet, and then I thought of the word cashew, and then I couldn't finish the <laughs> sentence. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Um, 98 points. <clears throat> Jono, we are looking for types of food. We are looking for types of food beginning with P. I'm hoping it's going to score less than 98, but it's not going to be much less than that, and I'm going to go for Petit Pois, which is a pea, garden pea. OK, and we're hoping it's not the, the official P of Florida or something like that. <laughs> OK. Hopefully. Petit Pois, you reckon, is a P. All right, well, let's see how far our resident guitarist gets with his riff this time. Uh, <laughs> see how many people said Petit Pois? P. <laughs> 87. That scores you 87, Richard. Yep, it's a P. That's the, the ultimate food beginning with P. Isn't it? P. Asparagus being the food that ends with a P, usually. Slightly whiffy one, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 87 people said that Petit Pois was a P. Well, you're winning so far. That is until Sarah steps up to the podium. <laughs> Sarah, you know your food and drink beginning I, with P. I thought I did. Um, I'm going to go for pumpernickel, which is a type of bread, I hope. Very good. Pumpernickel, a type of bread. 
Let's see how many people knew that. Oh, look at that. Very good answer from Sarah. 22 people knew that. That scores you 22. Richard Pumpernickel. Yeah, Pumpernickel is sort of a sour black bread from Germany. It, com it comes from Pumpen, which is German for breaking wind, and Nickel, which is German for goblin. Goblin? So breaking wind goblin. It's not exactly Mother's Pride, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Other it... breads are available. But it does sound delicious. <laughs> Richard, yeah, so these other a, scores. Let's and... take a look at the rest of the board. There are some really high scorers in this round. Parsley is another one, obviously. That is a herb and would have got you 94. Pecorino. Do you know what pecorino oh, is? Oh, delicious cheese. Delicious cheese, a, a used cheese. milk cheese. Yeah, that would have got you 25. And Patna. <sighs> Anybody Patna? Right. Everybody knows apart from you. And, and me, to be fair. Uh, yeah, Patna is rice. It's a long grain rice. Right, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores. As Richard said, very high scoring round, with the exception of David and Sarah. Sarah did fantastically well there with her pump and nickel. Jono and Vicky, not bad, 87, but Vicky, you've got a mountain to climb, as indeed has Sam on the next pass. Right, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put six more foods beginning with P on the board, and here they are. We have got. Parmesan, porcini, pinto, place, pappardelle, prosciutto. Parmesan, porcini, pinto, place, pappardelle, prosciutto. There they are. Remember, we are looking for types of food, the types of food that these are, and you are trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. David. Sarah has done spectacularly well. You are only on 22. You have to score 75 or less with this answer to get through to the next round. I think you can do it. I'm not uh, as well versed as Sarah. I just eat what she cooks and puts in front of me. <laughs> so she, did she not talk you through it? Uh, no, not usually. Ah. Um, so I'm going to play safe and go Parmesan cheese, please. OK. There is your red line. I think you might make it down below that. You're saying Parmesan cheese. Let's see if it's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Not an incorrect answer. But 100, every, every single person knew that Parmesan was a cheese. It's our first oh. ever, it's our first ever 100 point answer. That has, uh... yeah, so the uh, first time it's ever happened. That's quite. Are you, are you pleased you've got that? Oh, uh... Delighted. <laughs> Congratulations Thanks. of a kind, David. You are, you, you are, you're a one off. You, you are the first person. You go down in the pointless annals. He won't get to forget this ever. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you make him a big plate of spaghetti tonight. <laughs> And give him nothing on top of it. Right, <laughs> Vicky. Well, I love my food and I love cooking. I'm fairly confident on this one. Um, I could probably hazard a guess at all of them. I'm hoping I'm going to be right now. I'm going to go for porcini, which I think is a mushroom. Porcini, a mushroom. You have to score 34 or less with this answer to avoid becoming the high scorers. There is your red line. Below that, you're through to the next round, to the head-to-head. -head. You are saying porcini is a mushroom. Could be right. Let's see how many people said it, if it is. It's right. Oh! Wow. Close. A lifeline you've thrown to David and Sarah. That scores you 39, takes your total up to 126. You are the new high scorers. Richard Porcini. Yeah, Porcini, obviously, it's a large edible mushroom, sort of quite nutty. But, uh, again, a lot, a, lot of people, a lot of people knew it. People know their food. Very good. Sam, remember we are looking for foods that begin with P. You are on 98. You were the high scorers, don't forget, in the first pass. You have to score 27 or less. The one answer I know, everyone will know, place has been a fish. So that leaves me with three answers I haven't got a clue of. And I'm going to pull out... I can't even, rec I can't even pronounce it. Bottom one, prosciutto. 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 And I'm going to guess that prosciutto is a type of... spice like nutmeg. It's a spice like nutmeg. So, like, a little bit of prosciutto on his... Yeah, on I'm his... pretty certain I've got that one wrong. <laughs> Kim is... Kim is... 
Shaking her head. Oh, dear. There is your red line. You come below that red line, and you are through to the next round above that red line, or incorrect. And I'm afraid we say goodbye to you. Prosciutto. A spice, you say. Let's see if it's correct. Oh! Bad luck. I'm afraid prosciutto is not a spice. That is incorrect. It scores you the maximum of 100 points. Such bad luck. 198, therefore, is your total. Richard? I think it's probably more appropriate if, uh, if Kim tells Sam what, what prosciutto is. And if it's wrong, that's going to be very embarrassing, <laughs> but it's a type of meat, very, very sliced, thin ham. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, yes. uh, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the rest of this. Um, place, as you said, Sam, uh, is a fish, and you, know, it was, you couldn't have gone through it because it would have got you 93 points. You'd be out anyway. Pappadelli would have seen you through, though, Alexander Pappadelli. It's a pasta. It is a pasta. Pinto, pinto uh, is a pointless answer, so very Ooh. well done if you've got pinto at home. What do you think pinto is? It's a peach. It is a peach, I yeah, very that. well done, a flat peach. I happen uh, to know that. Thanks, Richard. So, at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Sam and Kim. Bad luck. I'm so sorry. Sadly, this was your second chance as well. So, we really do say goodbye this time, but you have been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing. <laughs> but for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so, well done, David and Sarah, Jono and Vicky. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at six... Thousand pounds. <laughs> now you're going head to head on the best of three questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, and you're now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for today's jackpot. Okay, let's play pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many regular QI celebrities as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for people who have appeared in 20 or more episodes of QI. Uh, to give you a, a base idea, someone like Jimmy Carr has appeared in 15. We're looking for people who have appeared in 20 or more episodes of QI. There are seven names on the list. OK, thank you. David and Sarah, because you've played the best so far, you get to go first. So we are looking for regular QI celebrities. <laughs> OK, David's suggesting something. Sarah's rolling her eyes. Um, we're not very convinced we're, at all. We don't watch it. We don't view it, no. So, very much a shot in the dark. OK. Um, Alan Davis. Alan Davis. Jono and Vicky. OK. We do we, watch this. We do watch it. Um, we know... Obviously, Alan Davis is on it. And we're sort of tossing between two answers in our heads. I like, think it's probably better if we stay safe on this one. Joe, Joe Brand? Yeah, we'll go for we'll Joe go Brand. For Joe You're going to go for Joe Brand. <sighs> and cross our fingers. Right, well, in the order they were given, Alan Davis said David and Sarah. Let's see how many people said that. Down it goes. 31. It's not a bad score. Yeah. Pretty pleased. Let's see if Joe Brand is a correct answer. That's what Jonah and Vicky have said. And if she is correct, let's see how many people said Joe Brand. It's correct. She wins you the points. After the first question, it is 1-0 to Jono and Vicky. Richard? Uh, you've been on QI, haven't you? Yeah. How many times? <laughs> Once. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's take a look at the, uh, the seven names you could have given the best answers. Sean Locke uh, from 8 out of 10 cats. He's been on... Uh, he would have scored you three points. He's been on more than 20 times. Phil Jupitus, uh, the American comedian Rich Hall. Uh, there's Joe Brand. Very good answer. Then... Uh, Bill Bailey, and obviously right at the top, uh, Alan Davis and Stephen Fry. Very, very well done if you've got all of those at home. Thanks very much, Richard. Jono and Vicky, if you win this point, you are straight through to the final. 
David and Sarah, you have to win this next point if you want to stay in the game. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many owls found in the UK as they could. According to the British Ornithologist Union list, in 2009, there are nine species of owl living wild in the UK. You just have to give us the most obscure. We won't accept the eagle owl, which has been spotted recently because it's not yet established in the UK. But ornithologists get a union. The union yeah, of ornithologists. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, get real, this wrong and they will be out. Very strident bunch. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right, uh, Vicky and Jono, you're, you're not conferring, which means you have already reached yeah. an answer. It's pretty easy because we don't know many. <laughs> so Great, it's a short isn't it? Surprising to look yeah. at us. Um, yeah, we, we came up with a list of three. OK. And out of that list, we're going to try a tawny owl. Tawny Owl is what you're going to go with. David and Sarah. Well, Tawny is off, off the, list. the list. That was actually going to be one of mine. It's a barn owl. I know barn owl, snowy, snowy. Owl, Tawny Owl. That's the only three I knew, no. actually. What do you think? Snowy I, don't think we'll win, I don't think we'll win it with barn owl. That's got to be the most common. Let's see Snowy, snowy. then. We'll go with Snowy. You're going to go with Snowy. A very good bit of team reasoning there. <laughs> OK, we have Tawny Owl. We have Snowy Owl. John and Vicky said Tawny Owl. Let's see if that's a correct answer. And if it is, how many people said it? Tawny Owl. Come on, whoa, whoa, whoa. 66 said Tawny Owl. David and Sarah have said Snowy Owl. This, to stay in the game, David and Sarah, this has to score lower than Tawny Owl, lower than 66. Let's see how Snowy Owl does for you. Good enough. Oh, wow. Look at that, 30. Oh. Ooh, <laughs> very, very good teamwork from the pair of you. Richard. Yeah, those were two of the big scorers. There are quite a few uh, obscure owls on this list. Well done if you've got some of these. Let's take a look at all of them. Hawk owl was a, uh, was a pointless answer. Tengmalm's owl, named after the Swedish naturalist. Tengmalm, of course. Of course, good stuff. Scops owl, the short-eared owl would have got you 12 points. A little owl, which is Aww. what you get when you bang your thumb with a hammer, that would have scored you 21 points. <laughs> the long-eared owl, which is always showing off in front of the short-eared owl, that would have got you 21 points. <laughs> and there's the big three, uh, snowy, tawny, and right at the top of the list, barn owl, with, uh, with 89 points. So 89 of 100 people said that. Vindication for you there, David. Thank you. <laughs> well done, and well done, Sarah, for... For, for agreeing with for him. For agreeing with him, exactly. <laughs> Whoever wins this point... Is through to the final, just so you know, and a chance to win our £6,000 jackpot. <sighs> Here's a third question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many United Nations Secretaries General as they could. Richard. We're looking for any of the Secretaries General of the UN since it was founded in 1945 up to 2010. There have been eight permanent Secretaries General of the UN, and you thought ours was hard. David and Sarah, you get to go first this time. I can't think of the names of the UN. Yes, we're, uh, we're struggling with this. We have one answer, but I suspect it might be the, the, the obvious one, which is youthant. Youthant. John and Vicky. Oh, I'm glad they think that's obvious. I've never, yeah. <laughs> never heard of it. Um, oh. Or him or her. <coughs> it's only one that I can think of. I think it was the UN Secretary General, but... It's one more than I can think of, so it's a good start. And I think this will be the most common one, but I'd rather try and give an an right answer than not. Yes. Um, and I'm going to go for Kofi Annan. OK, Kofi Annan. So we have Youthant, we have Kofi Annan. Let's take them in that order. Youthant first, let's see if that's correct, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. Right. Amazed. <laughs> Very good answer, Amazed. as it turns out. 13, that scores you. This is your second time in the head-to-head. -head. You've been so close to the final. This has to win this point for you to let you go further. Oh. 
bad luck. Youthant wins that for David and Sarah. 2-1, they go through to the final. Richard. Yeah, very, very well done. There were a few answers that, were, that would have beaten Youthant. Let's take a little look at them. Javier Perez de Cuellar was a, was, was a pointless answer. So very well done if you got him. Uh, Peruvian, he was uh, uh, Secretary General during the 80s. Trigva Lee was the first ever Secretary General. Kurt Waldheim, the uh, notorious Austrian. Dag Hammarskjöld from uh, Sweden would have scored you six points. Let's take a look at the rest. There's Boutras Boutras Gali, the Egyptian. So good they named him twice. Uthant, there he is. Ban Ki-moon, who's the current Secretary General. And uh, Kofi Annan was the biggest answer of all. But very, very well done if you got all eight of those at home. OK, thank you, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Jono and Vicky. Yeah. But what can you do, eh? It's the only one we knew with the UN Secretary General, so I'm glad we at least got yeah, the question tried. right. But did you, when you heard some of the other names, do you think, oh, I know that name? No, so that makes oh, really? it a little easier. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm just glad they didn't go for Kofi and Anne, then we'd have looked really stupid. Oh, well, well done, John and Vicky. You've done fantastic work. You've got this far twice now on two shows. Sadly, didn't make it through to the final, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thank you very much for playing. Thank you. So for David and Sarah now, it's time for our pointless final and the chance to win £6,000. So congratulations, David and Sarah, you've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. Yeah. 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 Very well done. You now have the chance to win our pointless jackpot, which at the end of this show stands at £6,000. Oh, there it is. OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. Now, we haven't had any pointless answers on the show today. You just have to find one now to go home with that money. But first, you've got to choose a category from these three options. Now, you can have movie soundtracks, universities or chemistry. Movie soundtracks, universities or chemistry. Well, what we know about chemistry could be written on the back of a postage stamp. It depends what the question is for universities. Um, movie uh, soundtracks. Oh, we know some. Yes. I mean, we do go to the movies quite a lot, but depends. Depends what era I know, that's I from. Know, and... I know. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's either it's movie either soundtracks or universities. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Oh, I don't know. I really don't know. Oh, I think movie soundtracks, we might have more chance with that. Right. OK, movie soundtracks it is. Yep. Right, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many tracks on the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack as they could. Richard? Yeah, it's one of the biggest selling albums of all time. It's got 16 tracks on it, but which of those are pointless? David and Sarah, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. And all you need to win that £6,000 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. I, th no. I think this was the wrong category. It was the wrong. Obviously. Unfortunately. Was the wrong. <laughs> Never mind. Well, with um, it now. What do you know? Um, staying alive? What else do you know? Staying Saturday alive. Yeah. Um, I'm sure. I can't think of any others. Uh, come on. Come I don't on. know. Do you know any? Oh, not my, nice. Not my movie. Oh. oh I've picked the wrong one. Um, 30 seconds remaining. No. I just Fever, don't. Fever. Just really don't know. It's the, um, the wrong movie. Um, think, 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 think. Nothing so, else coming to mind. No. So we've got the two. Not three. Fever, yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's put three. Three tracks down, anyway. I doubt if let's... we can come with three, actually, Alexander. Um, Saturday Night Fever, obviously. Saturday Night Fever. Uh, staying Alive. Staying Alive. Uh, we're struggling one. for a third. It's, it's not our film. I don't think we've even seen this. No. I'm just going with what I know is popular. Oh, God, it's a nightmare. This. I don't think we I can think, think we of know. another one. Sorry. Just, just give us any, um, any, any um, answer. Um, think of uh, a... Yeah, yeah, OK. Um, Dance With Me. Dance With Me. All right. So... Which of those do you think is your is your <laughs> your best punt at a, at a pointless answer? Dance with me. <laughs> okay, we'll put dance with me up third. <laughs> uh, we'll put Saturday Night Fever first, then, shall we? And yes. staying alive. Yeah, sure. Okay, Wait. right. 
Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive, and Dance With Me. OK, we were looking for tracks from the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. This was your least confident answer. You needed one of these to be a pointless answer for you to win that £6,000 jackpot. Let's see how many people said Saturday Night Fever. Oh, God. That wouldn't even be a truck. That's an incorrect answer. Unfortunately, therefore, not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. What would you do with £6,000? Oh, I'd spend it very, very easily. There's a particular DVD I can think you might go out and buy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sure. Or perhaps a, a CD, actually, more's the point. Saturday Night Fever, as it turns out, was incorrect. Your second answer, which is staying alive. Let's see if that is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Staying alive for £6,000. There it is. It's a correct answer. Down it comes. This has to be pointless for you to win that £6,000 jackpot. 33. Sadly, that is not a pointless answer either. Which means maybe dance with me, just maybe. The remaining Bee Gees might choose to take this track and, and write it if, uh, <laughs> if, if they haven't. Already. Maybe they did, and it's on that album. The only one way to find out, let's see how many people said Dance With Me, if it is a correct answer. This has to be pointless for you to win that £6,000 jackpot. Dance With Me. Yeah. Oh, it was just too much to hope, I'm afraid. Yeah, it was. So, Richard, what other answers should they have gone for? Well, firstly, just to clear up that, that Saturday Night Fever, the song is called, is called Night Fever, but oh, would, have scored yeah. you, uh, right. would have scored you 38 points. And there's a lot of big songs on there that, you know, there's Jive Talking, there's Disco Inferno, there's How Deep Is Your Love, all those things. But let's take a look at the pointless answers. There are a couple of big hits up here. Boogie Shoes, which is a very big hit for, uh, for KC and the Sunshine Band, that was a pointless answer. Calypso Breakdown, less of a big hit. KG by MFSB. A lot of letters there. Manhattan Skyline, Night on Disco Mountain, which is a disco version of uh, Mazorsky's Night on Bear Mountain, believe it or not. Uh, Open Sesame, which is Cool and the Gang. That's a pointless answer. And uh, Sal Sation, very, very well done if you've got any of those at home. Wow. Uh, well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to David and Sarah. It's been great having you on the show. You've been wonderful contestants. Thank you so much for playing Thank and doing so well. Thanks Thank very you. much. So, yet again, no one has won our jackpot, so it rolls over once more, which means on the next show we'll be playing for £7,000. <laughs> Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>